Today is the day that we put the air filters in my new smoke filtration system and turn it on for the first time. Whoa, wow. As you can see, we're not playing around here. Uh, and as you can see, we have this glorious Cam Fill Cam Cleaner 2000 behind me. So let's open this baby up. Swings. No, 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 no! All right, well, we run into our first problem. What am I gonna do? Uh, but I think our work is done up here, so let's go downstairs, drink some water, maybe an Arnold Palmer or something, and see how this works. Hi, I'm Kirby Allison, and today is the big day where I inaugurate my at-home smoke filtration system. That's right, after an incredible amount of work, an exceptional amount of effort, my at-home smoking dreams have finally been realized. That is to say that my smoke filtration system is operational and I can finally smoke inside at home. Uh, anyone that's been following this journey knows that it has certainly not been a straight line to get to where we are uh, here. Uh, this is a house that we uh, started building uh, now almost two years ago. Uh, and uh, one of my non-negotiables, if you will, uh, was that I was able to smoke inside. Uh, it is my strong opinion that the only civilized place to smoke is inside. Uh, even here in Texas, uh, and I'd say uh, even especially here in Texas, where it's either too hot too cold or there's mosquitoes, there's almost never a nice time to smoke outside. And let's be honest, if smoking is something that one enjoys as much as I do, uh, to be able to sit in the comfort of one's home inside to enjoy a cigar, uh, to me is a fundamental human right. Well, <laughs> at least that's what I've told my wife, uh, and she somehow bought onto this idea uh, to at least allow me to give it a shot. Uh, and so in collaboration with Camphill, uh, I've worked on installing what I think, and as what you just saw, uh, one of the most uh, complex and comprehensive indoor air filtration systems uh, probably ever installed in a home. I mean, these are the type of units uh, that you would normally find at a hospital uh, in an operating room, and not in some crazy person's uh, house. But uh, here we are, I'm crazy, uh, as you can all attest, uh, and this is the moment to finally enjoy that cigar. So uh, here we go. Uh, this is um, the area that uh, uh, I wanna be smoking in. Uh, this is uh, what I would call our formal sitting area. I mean, it's tiny, uh, right? But it's large enough for me and a good friend and two others are right in front of me to enjoy a nice cigar after a nice dinner. Now, we don't have a dining room table yet, but I'm working on that. Uh, and one of my goals is to probably replace this furniture at some point. Uh, the coffee table, this side table, I think are great. Uh, these uh, Cantoni, uh, whatever you want to call them, chairs are holdovers from our last house. I think we ran out of money, and so we're going to be waiting a little bit until we replace these babies. If you have any suggestions for what you think I should have right here, uh, please let me know. Uh, now, a few things before we light up. Um, first uh, is to turn on that smoke filtration system. I have a Bluetooth connector on my phone. So I am just going to hit that button right there. So we've got that. Uh, and then let's talk about accoutrement uh, because again, uh, being able to smoke at home uh, really invites the opportunity to uh, take one's accoutrement to the next level. Uh, so there's a few uh, new additions uh, that I just wanna show you all. Of course, this should be no surprise right here uh, that I would have a beautiful gold El Casco cigar cutter. Uh, you rarely find me smoking without one of these, and so now I have uh, one of these beauties dedicated to the house. So that is going to remain here as part of the permanent uh, kit at home. Uh, also, uh, you may have seen that online we have an exceptionally large collection of vintage Esti Dupont, Cartier, and Dunhill lighters. Uh, and so this is another gift to myself, a beautiful Esti Dupont table lighter. Uh, this is a beautiful gold. Now what's disappointing is that these are no longer made, so the only way to find one of these is vintage. Uh, and we have a large collection of these that have been hoarding uh, for the website. So if this is something you're interested in, uh, go take a look at kirbyallison.com. Uh, it's a simple soft flame, right? Uh, but it's absolutely beautiful. And again, you can control the height of the flame uh, right here. Uh, and there you have it. 
Uh, and this is absolutely stunning. I think one of these days I might actually have something engraved uh, right here, maybe an A or a Canon or a K or something. But uh, anyway, this is a showstopper uh, and it is right at home here. Uh, and then I have another really exciting addition. Of course, you've got to have somewhere to store your cigars. Uh, and it has been over much contemplation uh, that I finally have chosen a humidor. Uh, this right here is an absolutely beautiful uh, masterpiece from Humidores Havanas. Now, we uh, featured uh, Humidores Havanas and uh, uh, Jose Ernesto Aguilera uh, in our recent uh, Kirby and Cuba series. We had the opportunity to go visit his workshop in Cuba. Now, buying one of these and bringing them into America is completely legal, uh, even despite the U.S. embargo, because uh, this would be considered a piece of art. And Ernesto is an independent um, entrepreneur, really. Uh, he's a uh, private business owner. Uh, now, these are absolutely incredible in terms of the amount of work that goes into this market tree. Uh, now I've had the opportunity to visit both LA Blue, which we carry on KirbyAllison.com, uh, and uh, Humidores Havanas, uh, having visited the workshop in Havana. Uh, and this is not laser cut, you know, using some really advanced uh, technology like what you see at LA Blue. Now, their marquetry uh, is absolutely exceptional in terms of the intricate designs that they're able to realize. But this right here, there's just something else to it in the way that this is realized with entire whole pieces of wood, you know, really fit together like a jigsaw puzzle uh, and then cut with a bandsaw in order to create these beautiful uh, marquetry and designs. Uh, this is mahogany. This is one of their presidential humidors. We actually have a few of these available online at KirbyAllison.com that I was able to bring back with me uh, that we're offering very exclusively. But the other thing I love about these humidors uh, is that they are made using vintage mahogany that is effectively reclaimed uh, from old uh, antique furniture in Cuba and then recut and remade into these humidors. So the mahogany um, could be well over 100 years uh, that is used in this. And the same is true for the cedar. Now let's open this up, kind of take a look at this beauty. Now again, Ernesto was very kind and inscribed a, a very kind of touching uh, a message to me uh, here uh, in this uh, lid, thanking me for some of the work that we did with them. It has this kind of cedar tray. Uh, and then inside we have this, which lifts out, which is my uh, at-home selection of cigars. Now, this probably needs a little bit more work, as you can see. Accuse this of being empty. Uh, but I've got my favorite a Bolivar Corona Gigantes. I've got some Partagas Lusitanias. I have some Cohiba Siglo IIs. Uh, and then I have one of my favorite, and what I think is just an absolutely elegant and exceptional smoke, are the Por Laranaga Monte Carlo. So I think that uh, this is going to be today's smoke. So I'm gonna set that aside, open this back up. The humidor has a nice chamber underneath the tray uh, that allows you to very easily fit a Boveda pack. So that's uh, how I intend on humidifying this. So there we have it. I mean, uh, that is the humidor. This is the Monte Carlo. And I guess now is the time uh, to uh, put my money where my mouth is and uh, ensure that this, in fact, is able to uh, do the job filtering smoke. Uh, now you saw in the last video, the tour of the entire system. Again, it's extracting smoke right here. The idea is that it's pulling the air into this nook or this corner, the end of the room, which is helping to control the flow of smoke. It's being extracted into the attic. Uh, once it gets to the attic, it goes through that cam cleaner uh, 2000. Uh, it's only running at 1,000 cubic feet a minute. Probably turn it up a little bit. It's completely silent. Uh, and then it goes through a MERV 14 uh, pre-filter, uh, HEPA filter, 99.97% of all particles, and then 100 and 25 glorious pounds of carbon. And so then that filtered air being you know, really purified probably to even better than the quality of the air you'd find outside is dumped back into the house in the stairwell. And again, the idea is that it creates a flow of smoke, preventing uh, the smoke from really leaving this room and getting into the rest of the house. Okay, so let's cut this. Now I'm gonna light it. Beautiful cut. Now it's time to light this. Again, the beauty of doing this at home is uh, there's no rush, there's no wind. I don't need to use a, a blue flame or a torch. I've got the luxury of a nice soft flame here.
There we go. So, look at this beauty. Well, here's to uh, smoking uh, in good company and in the luxury of one's own home. Mm, that's amazing. Now this uh, Poor Laranaga Monte Carlo, again, is an exceptionally elegant uh, Vitola. Now what I like about this, of course, is its slim size. It is a 32 ring gauge. For reference, a, a Lancero like the Leguito Number no. 1 from Cohiba is a 38. A Trinidad Fundadora is a 40. Now this is a 32. Uh, and I first learned about this cigar on Falks and Sons. Max, of course, uh, having his propensity for, um, or talent, should we say, for um, finding the unusual and unpopular. Uh, these hidden gems amongst the Habanos portfolio uh, kind of discovered this and uh, they smoked it, he and his father, Nick, on one of the Falcon Sons. And I thought a 32 ring gauge, I mean, that's really not something that I would ever think about buying, but on their recommendation, I went out on a limb, of course, uh, and purchased a box and I have to say, I've really fallen in love with these. If Bianca were to have a first cigar, uh, this would be it. A very, uh, you know, medium flavor, I mean, medium to light bodied, right? Very creamy, it's a very easy, it's a very elegant smoke. It's not overwhelming in terms of the volume of smoke because of the ring gauge, uh, and it burns nicely. Um, now, the smaller ring gauge cigars are difficult to smoke outside where it's windy uh, because uh, they have trouble staying lit. And again, uh, something elegant like this is really best smoked inside. So uh, here we are, smoking inside, and I have to say that I'm really happy. You can see the smoke is kind of rising uh, right here. Uh, and then as it gets close to the air filter, it's, you can actually see it being sucked in. Now it's not like out of space balls, you know, with the uh, massive vacuum cleaner, you know, sucking all the oxygen out of that planet. Uh, it's not that strong that it's, you know, pulling smoke from across the room. And so in many ways, I, I do expect a little bit of smoke to maybe escape this area. It doesn't have the benefit of being completely self-contained. I mean, this is open to uh, the rest of the house. But I would expect that um, the smell or the odor of smoke to be, uh, be very faint uh, versus strong, say, if I were smoking with no filtration at all. Uh, and then in addition to that, um, you know, my plan would be to just leave this running all day or all night so that any residual odor is ultimately uh, cleaned up uh, over uh, filtration uh, during the next few hours. So again, this thing can run. I did the calculation that if I ran this uh, 12 hours a day, uh, 365 days a year, that the electricity would only be two or $3,000 at the current rate. So, you know, it's not like it's costing an arm and a leg to run. And in addition to filtering out the smoke uh, is still providing air filtration to the rest of the house and thereby increasing the air quality uh, for everyone. And so, you know, I was joking my wife that um, even despite smoking, uh, we're going to have the cleanest air of any house in Dallas. And that if she were to forbid me from smoking inside, then she would effectively be saying uh, that she doesn't like clean air. So we'll see how far that one goes. Wow, well, this is Poor Laron Yaga Monte Carlo, absolutely elegant cigar. We've had a little bit more time for this to develop, getting into kind of that middle third. Uh, and again, smoking very creamy. Uh, there we have it. So this is the um, new at-home uh, smoking filtration system. I think it's uh, working brilliantly. Uh, as you can see, it's pulling that smoke up, filtering it. I guess, um, you know, the ultimate test at some point will be uh, the wife and her nose, although she's got a, a very, a very strong nose. So uh, I fully expect her to smell a little bit, but uh, hopefully enough to uh, still let me get by on this. Kirby, where the hell does it smell like smoke? Uh, maybe there's a little bit more work to do on the home front, but uh, it's not going to get any better than this, so we'll have to see how we sort that one out. Uh, but there I am at Kirby Allison. Uh, as you all know, uh, I love to help the well-dressed acquire and care for their wardrobes while exploring the world of quality, 
craftsmanship and tradition. Uh, if you haven't visited KirbyAllison.com, it's the best way to support the videos that we film here uh, on this YouTube channel. Uh, there you'll find the largest collection of luxury garment care, luxury shoe care accessories in the world, as well as other great accessories for the well-dressed, like this beautiful sovereign grade necktie, pocket squares, box cloth braces, over-the-calf dress socks, smoking accoutrement, and so much more. <laughs> I'm gonna uh, go off and uh, try to uh, smooth things over with my wife a little bit.